Somali rapper Akega and Manse that even freedom fighters long for stories of love. I'm glad you right. So the theme today is about suffering and resilience. I'm translating. And until I came here, I didn't know exactly what story to tell. I, I don't have poems anymore as I grow older. I'm going to be a storyteller like every Rwanda Nelda. Um, jazz, uh, blues, Guhogoza. Um, Guhogoza is, for those who don't know Kinyarwanda, is when you sing like uh, the two gentlemen who just came before. Rwandan women, they used to, and men, uh, used to sing with a, it's a voice that comes from, from here. Uh, and it was so, so, uh, it's music, it's uh, come from a place of pain and resistance to pain. That's where jazz and blues and gogos are come from. And gospel. Gospel music, sometimes it's about God, sometimes it's about God saving us from the pains that we're experiencing. And that's really what Rwandans, Rwandan freedom fighters and black Americans and South African ANC members have in common is the fact that they used music, uh, blues, and jazz to resist to be resilient and to stay together and use um, gospel music. Um, I don't know if you know a song by uh, Brenda Fassi, God bless her soul, that says soon and very soon we're going to see the world. Do you know it? So I thought I'll tell you a story about why we're here. Many of us were born in exile and we were able to come back. Why did we not become Americans and Kenyans and Canadians and French and Belgians? It's because the community was able to be maintained together through Rwandan culture. You see those young men, they, you might think they know Kinyarwanda and Kivuga because they've been living here all the whole time, but they haven't. It's because I could tell which school they went to. If they were still here, I can tell you they went to St. Hore. St. Hore is Masamba's father. He used to have a home in Bushumbura, in Gagara, where Rwandan young people would congregate and learn uh, the, 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 the people, the poems they, they say. Half of it is their own uh, creativity. Half of it is part of the Rwandan heritage, the Rwandan folklore, which everyone can use. So I'm, I'm going to tell you a story that's called the soundtrack of war. The soundtrack of war is the music that starts really from uh, the early 80s, when Rwandans having settled in different countries, in Burundi, in ARC, and so these are the three set setups that I'm going to talk about. They start to miss Rwanda. Rwanda is, for us who live here, is this place you know, that you see every day where you pay taxes and, and where you, you live and walk by. But Rwanda is really, for some people, it's, a, it's almost a religion. It's, our parents used to tell us about Rwanda. And the Rwanda they told us about, we haven't even seen it to this day. It was, uh, it was a dream, it was, a, it was paradise, it was promised that. And music and art and culture used to help us do that. So, like black Americans resisting segregation, like South Africans, members of the ANC, resisting apartheid, the Rwandan diaspora in exile used to sing songs of grief and speak about the Rwanda, how they miss it, and how they would like to see it someday. My brother from Somalia can relate, because Somalis as well have this poem, it's about how they long for the peaceful Somalia, and when all the Somalis, countries, Djibouti, Somalia, Somaliland, uh, Puntland, uh, 
with the people in, in Ethiopia and in Kenya when they will all come together. In their flags, they have five stars which represent the five Somalis that are lost. And they have all this in their poetry. And so I want to tell you a story of how Rwandans would rally together. One particular song comes to mind, to mind it's called Rwanda by Kaireva. I don't know if you know this song. Unfortunately, I can't sing, but I can introduce it and people will pick it up. It's called, it goes, that's a song in the early 80s where Kairebga, she can't handle it anymore. She can't be in Belgium anymore. And she sings about how this beautiful and irreplaceable, amazing, and boys get really thinking it's them she's talking about, but she says, no, I'm speaking about my love. And her love is one, right? And there's even a verse where she says, uh, So she's saying, I can't love. I can't love nobody, I can't love all these boys in Brussels because I have no love to give my love as best. Kigali, why is she saying this? She's saying this because she's actually implicitly telling these boys, you are cowards. You never managed to get me back to, to home and now you're asking me for love. Get me first to Rwanda and then, then we can talk and then, and then, then I can love again and then so. But then throughout the, then, that's the early 80s, and then in 1986, Rwandans start organizing in exile, and then in the 90s, they create the RPF. And now when they create the RPF, it's one of the most important climax of Rwandan music. Because they start singing about music in the army, but music also in the community. They start singing about the, in French they call it Lev du Tom. Uh, the same guests. They set things and they have premonitions and they they sense they sense what's to happen. And sometimes they sing about success. You're not here, Do you know this song? No. So it's that song, that's a song when it's the first of October and that's when the army is attacks. And then this is a song. And then at some point they, they win a battle, there's a song about it. Then they lose a battle, there's a song about it. Then they need money because they have to buy weapons and bullets. They have They're encouraging the community to be generous and put in money to fundraise. And then they have a battle to come. So they prepare young people. They prefer people in Rwanda, they prefer people in, in, in the in diaspora that it's about to become decisive. We have this battle that we have to win. And then you have in Sint. Praise. Because this is this woman Maria Johanna who lost three of her boys in the war. Every time one died, she said the next, and then the next died, and then she said the next because Rwanda was much bigger than her own children. Right. So yes, but I have to, I have to, I kinda have to catch up. Yeah, the other day is a lecturer, he can be here for three hours. He's very passionate. Um, so I, I want you to do the two. Because I, I, I don't know if I have a destination. I thought the journey was the point. But anyway, so after this song, I am delighted to tell you that some of these singers who sang the whole are now singing lullabies for their grandchildren. Those are signs of peace because they have actually tried. 
they have got into their country. And now you have creative girls singing, Jesus, Jesus. You know this song? These are songs, and I ask, what is this? So this shows you the journey from exile to the struggle to victory and then to peace, last in peace. And now people are singing like Masamba, singing songs about weddings. People only do these things when they are at peace. And so I thought I'll tell you this story because I have a feeling young people think we just act and come. We, we didn't have a, a spiritual and philosophical idea for this millennial civilization that is right. Thank you. Thank you very much.